Welcome to our lecture online and now we're going to use Ampere's law to find the magnetic field inside and outside a conductor. So here we have a conductor. We have current running in the upward direction. The current density is equal to K, K being a constant. So we have current, the current density as constant, meaning the current is the same everywhere inside a conductor. And so now we have to relate, of course, I to J. We'll do that in just a moment. Realizing, of course, that the radius of the conductor is equal to big R. And so we want to find out what the magnetic field is anywhere inside a conductor and anywhere, anything, anywhere outside a conductor. So let's start with the inside of the conductor first. To do that, we pick any arbitrary point. Let's say we pick the point right there. We want to know what the magnetic field is at this location. So what we're going to do is we're going to draw a loop. And we know the loop. The radius of the loop, let's call it small r. r can be anywhere from 0 to the total radius of the conductor. And we want to know what the magnetic field strength is at that location. Of course, using the right-hand rule, the current going up, upward, we know that the magnetic field is going to have a circular pad all the way around. And we know that the direction of the magnetic field will be parallel to that loop all the way around. And notice if we take a small little line segment on that loop, dl, Notice that the L and the magnetic field will be in the same direction. Of course, we're going to use Ampere's law that says that the complete line integral all the way around the loop of the magnetic field multiplied times the path length. And of course, notice that we have a small little segment. We're going to integrate the product of B times a small little line segment all the way around. And that we know is always equal to mu sub naught times I and closed. So, since the two are parallel to each other, remember that the dot product, b dot dl, is equal to the magnitude of b times the magnitude of dl times the cosine of the angle between them. But in this particular case, the angle between them is always going to be zero degrees, because they're always parallel all the way around the loop. So therefore, this is equal to b times dl times the cosine of zero degrees. Of course, the cosine of zero degrees is one, bigger one there. So it's equal to simply b times dl. So that means that this line integral is simply b times dl all the way around the loop. And we can say that's equal to b times 2 pi r is equal to mu sub naught times i enclosed. Now we still have to find the current enclosed inside this loop right there. And of course, that's going to be a ratio of how big that inside loop is compared to how big the total loop is. Remember that the total current i is equal to the current density times the cross-sectional area. So in this case, the current density is constant. So we can say that I, and that would be the total I, is equal to K times the area, which would be pi times R squared. And of course, that is I total, the total current going through the conductor. Now, the amount of current going just to the inner portion there, limited by that loop right there, we can say that I inside is equal to I total times the ratio, so we take the total current, and it's times the ratio of the small area divided by the total area. So that would be area inside divided by area total. So in this case, that would be the total current running through the wire. The inside uh, cross-sectional area would be pi r squared, and the area of the total cross-sectional area would be pi times big R squared. Notice that the pi cancels out, and we're left with the total current times the ratio of the small radius divided by the big radius. And that would be I inside, or I enclosed. So therefore, we can write that B times 2 pi R is equal to, that's a terrible looking B. Let me write that one again. So there's B times 2 pi R is equal to mu sub naught times the current enclosed. We know that's going to be equal to the total current, I total times the ratio of little r squared divided by big R squared. Now simplifying this a little bit, notice that we have r there and r squared there, so this counts out one of those. And so we can say that the strength of the B field is equal to mu sub naught times the current, the total current, times small r divided by 2 pi times big R squared. And that would be the magnetic field strength inside, inside the loop. As R gets bigger, you have more current enclosed, 
and the magnetic field gets stronger, at the very center, the magnetic field should be zero because then R is zero. What happens when R becomes equal to big R, when we get all the way to the very edge? So at little r equals big R, we get B is equal to mu sub naught I total times big R divided by 2 pi big R squared. Notice that this will cancel out that, and you're left with mu sub naught times I total divided by 2 pi times R, which of course we already know is the equation for the magnetic field outside a conductor. Now, let's see if we can get that by using Ampere's law. So what we're going to do to find the B field outside, which of course we know should be equal to that, let's take a point outside right there and then draw a complete line going around like this is a circle line. Now let's say that the radius here is equal to R. In this case, R is going to be bigger than the radius of the conductor. So now let's do the same integral. So now it's outside. So we have the complete integral of B dot DL is equal to mu sub naught times I enclosed. Of course, now we can see that the current enclosed is all the current of the entire conductor because now we have of course, encircle the entire conductor. So we have the strength of the B field times 2 pi r, r not being bigger than the radius of the conductor is mu sub naught times the total current. And so therefore, B is going to be equal to mu sub naught times i total divided by 2 pi times r. And that will be the strength of the B field outside the conductor. Again, if we replace r by big R, that means if we then bring R in until R becomes right at the surface of the conductor, notice we'll then have mu sub naught I total divided 2 pi times big R, which is exactly what we have over there. Again, you can see that both equations converge to the same result outside and inside a conductor. So this is B field inside, and this is B field outside the conductor, very easily found by using Ampere's law. And that's how we do that.